Uh, hi, everyone. It's nice to be here today. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to do an introduction about NIM and some projects that you can build on top of NIM. Um, and these are not necessarily projects where you need to do an ICO or you need to have a coin. This is about uh, using the blockchain as proof of custody, proof of authenticity, proof of verifying the history of an item. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is Victoria's doll. So here is my iPhone. And if I come into my iPhone, I can open an app here. This is for my company Luxtag. And you can see on my app, on my phone, I have Victoria's doll. And I have all the information about Victoria's doll. And I have the history of it. I can make memos. I can update it. Um, and Victoria basically is this little girl in America. And she saw some of my videos on YouTube and she made this doll. It's actually a doll of me. <laughs> um, and the important thing about this doll is that because this doll exists on the blockchain, when I want to give this doll to my grandchild or my great-grandchild, -grand I can also give the blockchain certificate. And this is not just a hash of a picture. This is not just a little message. This is a full certificate that exists on the blockchain that has updatable information. It's a live certificate. It can be transferred from person to person. So it's a really neat system about putting certificates on the blockchain, and that's just one use case. I'm gonna to try to talk about some more today. NIM has programmable money on it. And this talk is about authenticity, but I'm gonna start off with money. What do I mean by programmable money? Normally on a blockchain like Bitcoin, for instance, when you have a Bitcoin, you can send it from Alice to Bob to Charlie, Bitcoin allows you to send money from person to person to person, anybody, and you cannot stop them. But on NIM, you can do programmable money. So when you make a token on NIM, you can make it transferable from any person, or you can make it so that it's not transferable, it's only refundable. If I send a token to Alice, she can only send it back to me. Or you can make money and tokens that are locked. This means if I send a token to Alice, she cannot send it back to me. She cannot send it to anybody else. It is locked in her account. And it's not just programmable uh, aspects of transferability. You can build levies on tokens, which means anytime I send a token to somebody else, there's a levy or a tax that's automatically programmed into the protocol to make that happen. And then we have supply. You can make a supply of a token to be fixed or changeable. Now, why do I talk about this? Because the blockchain is the birth of programmable money, but it's not just programmable money. In NIM, we also have smart certificates. Certificates like the one that I showed you just a minute ago for Victoria's doll. These certificates are very programmable. You can do a lot of really cool things with them. Some of the features that we have on these certificates is you can make the notarizations transferable. Again, it's not just putting a hash on a blockchain, it's making a fully transferable certificate from person to person. You can make these certificates owned by multiple people. You can split the ownership. You can make these certificates verified by third parties. Think of a car certificate. You know, you have ownership of the car. It can show the history of the car. You can have the government verify that the certificate of the car. You can have them say that the taxes were paid or that the license plate is up to date. And you can even integrate these certificates with the IOT so that the certificate is used to turn the car on and off. And this is not a promise of something tomorrow. This is live. If you come to the NIM booth today, here at this event, there is a company, 482 Solutions, and they're showing a live integration on the NIM blockchain of a little toy train. And this toy train can only be operated when there's an ID card, when there's a certain temperature, when there's a certain weight of the train. 
It's very programmable and it integrates. So please come by the demo later on today and see all the powerful things that you can do with the NIM blockchain. But it's not just smart programmable money. It's not just smart programmable certificates. It's smart programmable voting that you can do. Right, and so for the first time ever, we get to do voting, and this is transparent voting. This is voting that you can see the moment the election ends, who won the election, and you can make re-voting happen. You can do delegated voting. If I'm not gonna be in town, I can delegate my voting power to someone else. This is programmable voting. I can allow someone else to vote for me. Or if I don't like the vote, I can change my vote. It's not dumb voting where you just check something on a piece of paper and turn it in. It's very, very useful. This is blockchain changing the world, not just for money, but for all other kinds of things. Now, we have this new version of NIM, and it is doing things that you wouldn't even want to dream about doing in other blockchains. It's very advanced, it's called Catapult. It's open sourced right now. You can go to the GitHub, you can fork it, and you can download it. What makes Catapult so powerful is we have four layers. We have layer one, and this server only does peer-to-peer -peer transactions. This is security and this is the network. But here, this is great for developers. If there's any developers in the crowd, I know that you like MongoDB. You love MongoDB because all that information is there for you and you get a great API and you get a great SDK built on top of NIM. And then you can have your light clients. And I want to mention that the last talk we were talking about light clients for Bitcoin wallets. NIM Catapult is using a really advanced technology called Patricia Trees. And this is cryptography. So any light client can talk to any node and know for a fact, backed by cryptography, that the information is safe and secure. And this fact that NIM has Patricia Trees in Catapult is going to allow IOD devices, it's going to allow robotics, it's going to allow a new wave of smart internet devices to trade cryptocurrencies for services and to be able to do it trustlessly and to be able to do it seamlessly. It's a really, really cool way to think about blockchain. NIM has a different architecture. So what does NIM do in Catapult that's especially neat? Well, we are doing aggregated transactions, we are doing multi-level multi-sig, and we are doing cross-chain transactions. I'm gonna give you a couple um, brief introductions about what these are. So aggregated transactions. This is one of the favorite things, and again, this is something that I've not seen any other blockchain be able to do. Imagine something like a house certificate. Certificates are something that we buy, we sell, these are very important, but a certificate on a house is very complicated. So let's say Alice and Bob. Alice wants to give Bob 3,000 Zim for the house, and Bob wants to give the title. Now that would be normally how we would do a transfer of a house, except for houses are not that easy. Actually, when you buy or sell a house, it's a very complicated matter because you also need a realtor. And that realtor is going to want some money for that transaction and they're going to try to approve it. And then we have the government. And the government's going to want some money. And then the government's going to certify that certificate for that house. And what we ha really have is we have a big complicated mess like this. Now, in some platforms, you could try to make a smart contract. And this smart contract would handle all of this. But it's a little bit difficult because in some platforms, when you make a smart contract, you put it on the blockchain and it lasts forever. And some smart contracts are good to last forever. Let's say I pay my rent every month, $100 January, February, March, April, May, $100 every month. That's a great use for a smart contract that lasts forever. But you know what? Most transactions are not transactions that happen on the same day of the month at the same time with the same people for the same amount of money. Most transactions, just stop and think for a minute. Think about the last 10 times that you spent money, the last five times you spent money. Was that something that was a regular payment or was that a 
different payment. It's probably a payment at a store for a certain amount here, a payment at another store for a certain amount there, and it was very wire, very different. In NIM, we allow you to make one-time use smart contracts because most transactions are one-time transactions. Most transactions don't happen month after month after month. Most time that you spend money, it's at a different place with a different person for a different amount. And that's what this is. It's different people for different amounts for different things. Now the beautiful thing about this one-time smart contract is it's not an A, B, C, D, E transaction. This is one transaction. A plus B plus C plus D plus E equals one transaction. This happens in one block under one transaction, ha one transaction hash when all the signers have signed. And that means nobody can get cheated. It either all happens or it doesn't happen. And it's a one-time smart contract that's created and then once it's done, it's done. And then you create another one-time use smart contract. And all this is created client side. It's incredibly safe. It can't go wrong. We use NIM APIs and the NIM SDK to execute this. This is revolutionizing what blockchain is going to be in the future. Now, we also have another example of something that's revolutionary in NIM. It's multi-level multi-sig. Think about your wallet. Normally, you have money in your wallet, okay? And let's say I have my phone, my phone controls this account. What's gonna happen is I would wanna make multi-sig. That way if I lose my phone, I can always restore my account. And that's, we people think that, that that's secure, right? I have two ways to get to my account, but actually that's not as secure because now there's two ways you can get hacked. Your phone can get hacked or your backup recovery account can get hacked with multi-sig. So how do we solve this on NIM? We solve it by taking the restore account and making it into multi-sig itself. So now I can send money anytime I want or my mom and my brother can send money. But what if my mom is on vacation or my brother doesn't know crypto very well? Well, I can add it so that it's my best friend and my brother? Or what if my best friend, I'm not completely sure if I can trust them because maybe my best friend can break into my brother's house or something like that. So I can even divide it up. It takes this friend, this friend, and my mom to send money or just me. And you can make these multi-sig multi contracts on them multiple layers and it allows for really advanced logic. Like for instance, the train demo that you can see at the NIM booth today, where it takes a signer and a signer and a signer and a signer to operate the train. It's not just about money. This is about using advanced logic and applications to make them go live. And one other thing that we do in NIM that's really good, and this is so simple because again, it's built into the SDK, is cross-chain transactions. From any NIM chain to any other NIM chain. This is not NIM to Bitcoin or NIM to Ethereum, this is NIM to NIM. But it is a trustless transaction, it is an easy transaction, it's a wonderful transaction to use. And it works with a shared secret in between two different chains. You can do public chain to private chain, private chain to private chain. It's however you want to do it. So, and you can even add some of, some of these advanced contracts where you're adding things like the house certificate into it. Very useful. So Catapult's live, you can see it at github.nim.tech. Um, companies all around the world, Asia, America, and Europe that I've talked to have already downloaded this and forked it and started the build on it. Let me show you some examples of some of our ecosystem, but also some projects. This is an open source project on NIM. It's called NIM P3. This is not 
about making an ICO coin. This is about being able to buy and sell music on the blockchain. Here's another example, IO NIM. This is an IoT project that's connected NIM into the IoT. This is again open source. All of these are open source. Here's another one, Ninventory. This is about doing inventory and supply chain on the NIM blockchain. Again, open source. This is NIM DNS. This is about using the NIM blockchain as a DNS server. It doesn't have to be for websites only. It could be for phone numbers. It could be for anything that you wanted to use it for. Here's another example. A few weeks ago, I was in Montana with the Crow Nation. The Crow Nation is an Indian tribe in America. And with the Catapult technology, um, a company building on NIM, HE3, in partnership with the Universal Tribe Partners, demoed an application built on Catapult to the Crow people. This app is about identity of people, it's about voting of the people, it's about the property titles of the people. And this is a live app, I've already seen the demo myself in person, and hopefully again later on this will be an open source app too. So this is a little bit about NIM. Here's some projects that have done ICOs or are doing ICOs. Here's some companies that are not doing ICOs because you can just use the blockchain to build things and build wonderful applications. Um, HE3 Labs is the company that did the Crow demo and Luxtag is the company that I showed you at the beginning of today. Um, so that's about it. Um, I have time for one question if anybody would like to ask one. Thank you. No, yeah. I thought that was great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That's okay. Um, okay, we got one over here. Yes. We have a microphone. Uh, thank you, very nice presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, question is, with uh, third-party verification, if, uh, for example, uh, you show this uh, transaction with um, uh, ownership certificate for household, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is government already uh, included in, in this chain, or it's just the future? Um, this hypothetical example that I gave here would assume that the government is definitely involved. And so for instance, with the Crow Nation, if they were to do property titles, they would also have to have the, Indi the Bureau of Indian Affairs also approving those transactions. There would not be just one government agency, there would be multiple government agencies. So this putting property titles on the blockchain assumes that the government is certifying those and recognizes those property titles. If you just put a property title on the blockchain, and the government doesn't recognize it, it doesn't hold up in court, it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just to add, but yeah. basically you claim that it's, a po it's supposed to be a one-time transaction. Yes, yes, it, just, yes it is. So, so it means that the government should be online and do it immediately. Oh, Otherwise online. it's... Has, yeah. has no sense. Thank um, you. There's a time limit. So whenever you initiate this contract, each of the parties that are sending, not to receive, you don't have to sign the contract. But to send, and in this case, the government is sending a stamp to the certificate and approving it. Yes, there's a time limit within that time period. The government has to approve that. Um, and so there is a private key for the government that's involved, there's a private key for Alice that's involved, and there's a private key for Bob that's involved, and because they're all senders on this contract, they all need to sign it. But once they've all signed, then the network accepts that contract. Yep. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Get you the clicker. Oh, that was great, actually. Yeah. Yeah. One more question, please. Yeah. Actually, two questions. Okay. Quick. He's, he's already got the mic. Yeah. First of all, uh, is there is a problem uh, to build a smart contract, mm. uh, a money back uh, smart contract? Yes. Yes or no? Okay. And the second one, uh, how you deal with the big data storage? I mean, the certificates, uh, the this data, personal data is a lot, uh, is a big amount of data. How you mm. store it in a blockchain? What is the solution to store this data? Thank so you. No, no blockchain is very good for a lot of really, really big data. 
Like, so for instance, if you wanted to take the country of India and put everybody's identity on the blockchain and everything that Indi everybody in India has ever done, that would be a terrible idea. Putting health records, someone's like, my health records just myself are too big or bigger than the NIM blockchain, just for me. So um, a lot of people are looking into IPFS. I'm a big believer of using IPFS. And I think that there's a lot of people that have done that. Um, I think the more important thing when it comes to big data is how we maintain our privacy. And um, that is something that everybody's still working on. Private chains are better than public chains for maintaining privacy. Uh, but that's still something that's going on. And the reality is with blockchain, most people are just trying to get regular transactions to work on public chains. And when we talk about doing real big data for millions of people for a whole country, nobody's really close to actually deploying that in a live and secure way. There's proof of concepts, yes, but not really anybody that's rolling that out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So again. Yep. Okay.